remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. His evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And it was one of our great Missourians, Mark Twain, great author, who is famous for the phrase, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. Well, it, it seems to me that in some of the criticism of the Ferguson Police Department and the issues that are going on right now, some of that criticism from the left and from the media seems to me to be a combination of damned lies and statistics. There's no doubt over the last couple of days in, in some of the Ferguson coverage you have seen some members of the news media take Ferguson police to task for a disparity in terms of their traffic stops and arrests and that sort of thing, saying that the uh, population of Ferguson is, is a certain percentage black, but it's a much higher percentage of traffic stops and arrests that are blacks. And I've seen this reported on MSNBC Tuesday night. I think it was Rachel Maddow's show. Locally here, I've seen that reported on uh, Channel 5, KSDK. I've seen it reported on Channel 2, KTVI. So everybody's kind of grabbing onto this. It's probably been reported some other places as well, but those are the three places I've seen it. And the, the statistics I always quote are these, and these are uh, stats you can get from the Attorney General's website here in the state of Missouri, Chris Coster. He's got a website up with all this stuff. You can go look it up yourself. The population in Ferguson for blacks is about 67.42%. Population for whites is 29.26%. But in terms of the traffic stops, the stops from the police in Ferguson, the blacks have 86.03% of those stops and the whites have 12.74%. Okay, so they're giving you those numbers and they're claiming that it's an absolute tragedy. It's an absolute scandal and trying to push it as though it's the worst thing ever. But there's one problem with that logic. There's a very critical and even simple piece of mathematical logic that these reporters and these liberals are overlooking when they paint that picture for you. Now, I'm going to give you that piece of mathematical logic here in just a moment. But I ask for you to indulge me just for a second because I've told you in the past that my training is uh, as... A social studies teacher. That's what my degree is in. History education, so, social studies education. So I can teach you and I can teach your kids all about American history all day long. But I'm not a math teacher. But for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to try to be a little bit of a math teacher for you. So bear with me just a little bit. Okay, so we talked about how blacks are 67.42% of the population of Ferguson, but they are 86.03% of the traffic stops. It's a big difference. The disparity of about what, 19% thereabouts. Okay, that's a big difference. And those who had criticized this seem to have the idea that traffic stops and arrests, that percentage within a particular group, should be roughly close, roughly equal to that group's percentage of the total population. That it would be kind of like a one-to-one -one basis, if you will. That if one group of people were, say, 40% of the population, then you would expect that same group of people to get about... 40% of the arrests, or maybe 38%, or maybe 42%, but somewhere in that neighborhood, right? That it would be a one-to-one -one relationship, that the percentage of the population you are would then translate roughly to the percentage of arrests, percentage of stops for your group of people. That's what they're getting at. But I want you to think about something. How could that be a reasonable expectation? Well, mathematically speaking, there is one way that that expectation could be reasonable. The expectation that the percentage of your group in the population would translate to the percentage of overall traffic stops or arrests would be reasonable if the crime rate, in terms of committing of crimes, the percentage of people who commit crimes, percentage of crimes committed by each group were roughly equal, roughly similar. In other words, if there was not a big disparity among who were actually committing the crimes, then yes, traffic stops, arrests, should in theory be pretty close to your percentage of the population. But what if different groups do not have similar crime rates? 
What if different groups commit crimes more frequently than others? Could you then expect to have that one-to-one -one relationship between your percentage of the population and your percentage of the arrests or your percentage of the traffic stops? Well, no. Because if one group is committing 80% of the crimes and one group is committing 20% of the crimes, then you would think that the group that's committing 80% of the crimes would have an even higher proportion, an even higher percentage of the arrests and traffic stops, etc. Now, what am I getting at here? We've already seen that blacks in Ferguson are stopped, are 86.03% of the stops, they're only 67.42% of the population. Well, consider this. Did you know that 53% of all homicides in America are committed by African Americans? And as of the last census, African Americans only made up 13% of the population. So you've got 13% of the population committing 53% of the homicides? The white folks and nobody else is getting anywhere near that number. So pretty clearly, there's a tremendous disparity in terms of the actual commission of crimes when it, between blacks and other races. Also back in, I believe it was 2013, New York City Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly stated that 70 to 75% of all crime in New York City is committed by blacks. And he was referring to assault, robbery, shootings, grand larceny, those kind of things. So again, another piece of evidence that shows that as we stand today, blacks are committing a far higher percentage of crimes. Down in Atlanta back in 2011, a report from the Atlanta Police Department Uniform Crime Reports showed that uh, African Americans were 54% of the population down there in Atlanta, but were responsible for 95% of the rapes, 94% of the robberies, 84% of the aggravated assaults, 93% of the burglaries. And these are just three little statistics that I'm giving you. There's volumes of information, volumes of research on this that you can go look up for yourself. The point of it all is this. It's very clear that the crime rate, the rate of actual commission of crimes is not anywhere close between the races at this given time. Now, I'm not making any comments about what causes that. I'm not certainly not saying that blacks are predisposed to crime or anything like that. That's an entirely different debate for another day. I think that disparity can change in the future. I think it should change in the future. I hope it does change in the future. But as we stand today in 2014, the disparity is very clearly there. That blacks are committing far more violent crimes than whites. That's just fact of life. So with that being acknowledged, it now is not reasonable to think that the blacks' percentage of traffic stops or arrests in Ferguson, Missouri should be commiserate with their percentage of the overall population. Absolutely not. That cannot happen if you're committing crimes at a far higher percentage than the whites or everybody else. So now when I see the blacks are 86.03% of, of the traffic stops, it makes me wonder... Maybe that, maybe that number's just a smidge low. I mean, would it have to be higher than 80s? I don't know. But it certainly doesn't seem like a problem to me. When you strip away all the emotion and all the protests and everything else, what do we actually expect our police to do? We expect our police, as property owners and taxpayers, we expect our police to go out there and respond to crimes as they happen, or if they observe a crime happening or something that appears to be a crime happening, to step in at that point. That's what we expect. Now, if we follow the logic of those who criticize and say, oh no, you've got a far higher percentage of traffic stops for blacks in their population, if we actually followed that, what would the repercussions of that be? What, what would actually happen? You would get to a point where you'd be towards the end of a month, you're sitting there in the police station, you get a call in about, a robbery or a murder or something like that. And then you have to say, well, we can't really go out and arrest anybody for that because the suspect is black and we've already arrested our percentage of blacks for the month. So we can't really do anything for you. And then conversely, you'd have to go out there and try to make up crimes for whites. That's not justice at all. That seems to be what a lot of people think of as so-called social justice, where they think it's a job of law enforcement, the job of government to right perceived wrongs that various groups have. But really, 
There is no such thing as social justice. Justice is actually an individual thing. Justice is something that is a case-by-case situation. Our entire justice system is built on that. You go into a court of law, you try the case you got. You don't try the case of some other guy down the street who had nothing to do with you. So social justice is bullshit. What we really should be after is individual justice. And in terms of individual justice, knowing that as it stands today, far more violent crimes are committed by blacks than whites, with blacks being a far smaller percentage of the overall population, then yeah, I think one should expect, at least for the time being, that blacks will be a higher percentage of traffic stops, arrests, searches, etc. Now, in closing, I will say this. I do, I do understand the frustration of those in the black community who... Uh, see what they feel is a disproportionate amount of arrests and traffic stops and, and so forth. And it is disproportionate, but I've just proven it's a disproportion that's earned. But yet I understand your frustration with that. You, you, you think it's a bad thing. You don't like, you don't like police looking at you uh, suspiciously. You don't like your fellow uh, residents, your fellow citizens looking at you with suspicion. I understand that. I get that. You should be, on some level, you should be frustrated with that. On some level, yeah, you should be angry with that. I don't begrudge you for that. But what I would say to you is that the frustration you feel, the anger you feel, should not be directed at those of us who are trying to protect ourselves. Instead, why don't you turn that anger onto those members of your community who are committing these crimes and focus on them? Reduce the crime in your own community. And this will not be a necessity. Then those numbers over time will fall more into line with each other. And we'll all trust each other a little bit more. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.